Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is RJ. So the latest Townstar competition is over and we're going to be checking out what happened and how we got on. So keep watching. Okay, and welcome to another video. And remember, if this is your first time visiting my channel and you want to learn more about how to earn cryptocurrency for free, about cloud mining sites, crypto investments and lots of other crypto related stuff, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to tag that notification bell so you're alerted to all my latest content as it comes online. Okay, so uh, here we are in my Townstar account. Unfortunately, um, I wasn't able to give you, uh, like I have been the last couple of videos, sort of like a, a countdown to the end of the competition because I was away yesterday. So basically, I had to let it run out uh, without me here and just cross fingers. Everything went re well and nothing got reset or shut down or anything like that. But we did come through uh, the last part of uh, the competition unscathed. So uh, we did OK. So but it was it was still an eventful competition. Uh, I hope obviously everybody did well. Uh, and if you didn't manage to get yourself an, uh, an NFT this time, I hope at least you maybe improved, uh, you know, on your la on your last competition. You know, are you claiming more points? Are you, you know, getting higher in the rankings? All that kind of stuff. Because at the end of the day, if even if you're not uh, sort of quite at that point of earning uh, anything in these competitions... As long as you're moving up, eventually you will get there. So as long as you're improving your build, you're getting more star points every time uh, you try. You know, you enter a competition, uh, you get your getting higher placed every time you enter a competition. Eventually, you are going to get to that point of winning and earning yourself either some gala tokens or an nft or something like that so you know as long as you're moving forward that it's all good it's all good just keep pushing keep practicing keep put, getting onto those p2e servers and practicing those builds get better and better at them i will do my best to create more and more how-to content that is going to hopefully help you out getting to that final point of winning and earning yourself some rewards in these competitions so like i say keep persevering don't give up and you will get there so like i say this competition it it was still an, an eventful one uh, for me obviously um we started at 5 p.m gmt time uh, which for me, it actually works out better for me. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if some of you prefer starting at the uh, sort of uh, uh, earlier times like we did in the last competitions, which for me is one o'clock in the afternoon. So 1300 GMT. Uh, I don't know if some of you prefer that uh, starting earlier, but I actually prefer starting later. And the reason why is because basically i can get my town up to the point of um do like get all my rushes up and running do my uh fuel depot and then just go to sleep and then i'll i'll wake up in the morning i'll wake up in the morning and i will have x amount of millions in my bank and i'll uh, my brain is all fresh and i'm ready to start building and that's why i like the later start the only reason, the only benefit really of starting earlier, I see, is it's possible that there's actually less players on the server. So finding a good spot might be a bit easier because obviously most people are probably out of work. On a Tuesday, I actually work from home. So it is, I'm available, it, you know, and I'm that, but for me, that is the only benefit because for me, starting at one o'clock, I've basically got to do my entire build all in one day rather than doing it in stages, which I prefer. Um, so for me, it, it, it just really drags it out. It's it sort of by the end of it, I'm just absolutely dying and I just want to get to bed um, after staring at a computer for I don't know how many hours straight. Um, anyway. Like I say, this competition did have it, its points. So we started off, we got our rushes up and running. Um, 
and it it just seemed super competitive at the beginning. Um, I normally I'm up in you know like the top two hundred, top three hundred with the rushes I I use. This time I don't think I got up much higher than about the top five hundred or something like that. And even by the time I finished my fuel depot, I was already slipping back a bit. So anyway, I went to bed. I woke up in the morning. And I was at like 1,000 and something. So, and on a Wednesday, I, I don't work from home. So I basically, I couldn't do anything, even first thing in the morning. I couldn't really do anything to my build. And I just sort of had to hope that by the time I got home, the, the amount of points that I was earning would keep me sort of, you know, in, in the sort of, um, low 1000s, you know, kind of thing. Anyway, about, I don't know what it was, maybe lunchtime. Uh, I checked on my mobile phone in Gala Guru. I thought I'll check it out, see how it's going. And it said, it says obviously my points in the first column. And then the next column is how many points you've earned in one hour. And it said, zero or in the last hour not in one hour but in the last hour and it said zero and then i looked at um the next column which is what you've earned in the last two hours and it was really low it was only about thirty-three thousand. and i'm like oh in fact i think it was lower than that just thinking about it and i'm like Right, what I'm going to do is I'm not sure because sometimes Gala Guru do has, does have some issues and I checked out some other players and some of them it showed what they were earning in that last hour and then other players it showed zero still. It showed zero again. So I thought well, perhaps they're out, it's having a few glitches on certain accounts. So about an hour later, at, so about one o'clock, um, I checked it again and it said, um, obviously my... By this time, I've dropped down into the 2000s marks. You know, I'm, I'm in ranking 2000. Uh, and it says last, last hour points, still zero. And then it said last two hours. And then that said zero as well. I'm like, oh, you're joking. And um, I don't leave, you know, I, I don't leave work till about 4 p.m. in the afternoon when I go out to work. And then I've got to get home. So I don't didn't get home until about 4.30 I came straight upstairs, my computer's running, Townstar's running, but for some weird reason, nothing has sold. My auto sell script is running, but it's like everything has just filled up and nothing has actually sold. And then all I did was I clicked on the uh, trade boat, I just clicked on it, and then it just sort of reset itself and then everything started selling so i don't know exactly what that was about or what happened i don't know if there was some uh, reset in town start early and for some weird reason um it um it just didn't sort of click right with my pc but like i say everything was running but nothing sold so basically i got home i was I don't know, I was something like, I don't know, 2,300 or something like that. Um, so, obviously, I, 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 you know, got grabbed myself a coffee, grabbed myself a little bit to eat. As I say, I'm about uh, 2,300 or something, 2,350 or something like that. And um, anyway, right from this point, I've got to get, obviously, my town completed, got to get it finished. And then by the time we got it finished, it was actually 10 p.m. I don't know why it took so long. Uh, it just did. It just seemed to take a long time. So like from like, let's say quarter to five for me to get my town completely finished. So it was absolutely totally done up and running. It, that, it, I didn't get finished until 10 p.m. And then basically at 10 p.m., I posted in my Discord channel... So it says here, hey all, so town finally finished, and I'm about to unleash it. As you can see, I have added my place so far, so let's see how 
high we can climb. So at 10 p.m., it might have been about 5 past 10 or something like that, but it was around 10 p.m. We were at 2,832. So that's nearly 3,000th place. I would basically obviously lost pretty much a whole day or most of the day of running uh, on Wednesday. I didn't get my town finished until late. Wednesday night, uh, and then we were at this point, yeah, so basically we just sort of, uh, I got it running, and, and the, the thing I did do, because I, I, I just didn't turn my monitor off, I, I've never had the problem before, but I just thought, I wonder if turning the monitor off upset it for some weird reason, like, in the past... In the past, I've never turned my monitor off. It's never been a problem. But I so basically, for the rest of the competition, I left my monitor running, and it it, it seemed to work. See, it seemed to run seamlessly. So obviously, we want to get to you know where we finish. Obviously, I, I, that's pretty much the story of how where we got. So with eight hours left in the competition. We click here. This is where we've got up to. So uh, with eight hours left, as you can see, eight hours, 24 seconds, and fi 24 minutes and 55 seconds. So eight and a half hours left in the competition, and we were at 1,160. So the great thing about that is we had earned an epic NFT. We'd actually earned ourselves at this point with only eight, with only eight and a half hours left. We'd actually earned ourselves an epic NFT. So we got ourselves all the way from essentially three thousandth place or two thousand eight hundred up to into the the you know into the epic NFT area. Anyway, at the very end of the competition, so that's eight and a half hours later, we actually ended up in. 1,121st place. So in that eight hour, out eight and a half hour stint, we gained another 40 places. I mean, how good is that? I mean, I, I was so pleased. I mean, just getting into that sort of epic NFT area, I was super pleased. I did a, a, at the beginning, obviously, as we all know, at the at, in the early stages, you know, when you're selling like the, the main the main product like jam i was jumping like 30 places i think in the first hour i made up 200 places so from uh, and i think in the first two hours i'd basically made up over 300 places in the first two hours after we started that build at, at 10 o'clock uh but then like i say at the end of the competition this is where we ended up at 1121st place so for me i was super happy really really pleased uh with how we we got on you know and like i say i hope everybody else had a great competition uh i am really pleased with uh you know i think i think the only thing i I wasn't sort of overly keen with about this competition is it it literally was just one one product uh so everybody just was doing the same thing that whereas in the past product in, in the past competitions they've sort of given a couple of possibilities you know they've given it you know like a blue steel and a, and a what was it and a candy canes or a, a, you know a blue steel and something else or you know so so you've got a choice you and 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 for me that sort of adds to it because you've got to think you've got to work it out you've got to look at the points you've got to think about how long how long is that going to take to build how long is it going to be before i get my first sale all those kind of things so that really plays into the strategy but with this competition it was sort of just like that's the meta jam everybody's going to be doing the same thing so you know in that respect you know i think it could have been better i think they could have given you more options uh for things to do um the other the i mean the the other thing is is obviously as we know that uh, the nft itself what is a that we're going to win from this competition or the competition that, that we're talking about now uh was an nft card so very much like the gusty wind nft card which helped with um 
uh, your windmill speed the one that we're going to get awarded for for this is a greasy wheels minor card so basically it's an nft that is going to help your minds work faster if i think if you got an uncommon it was something like uh five percent or something like that it, it helped four or five percent if it, you got um, a rare it was uh something like 10 percent 10.5 percent and if you got an epic which is what we did or uh i which is what i did uh we got 14 percent, and then you got legendary and ancient i actually thought like as i was trying to say in the early stages i thought i might actually hit legendary and get into that top 600 but obviously late as the time went on i was just really pleased to get that epic uh, and the thing is is you know it once, you know, like in every competition, there generally are some cheaters, some people that abuse the system. Once they get removed, I could probably be at 1,098 or 1,070 or something like that, depending on how many got removed. In the last competition, in the last competition, um, 79 players were removed for cheating. So if you got, if you, you're, Obviously, you had to get in the top 1,000 in the last competition. So if you got in, say, 1,080 and you've not checked your account, go and check your account. Because, like I say, they removed 79 cheaters. You might well find that you've had a deposit of some, some gala, like 100 gala or something. You might well find you've had that deposited in your account. So go and check it out. Okay, so, uh, just a little bit of news, um, which is a bit disappointing. If we dive into the Townstar announcement, this is something that's popped up today. I, I've noticed it today. Uh, like I say, I have been away. I was away yesterday. Uh, and it just basically says, and this is, um, so basically, they're, they're going to stop temporarily the paying out of town coin right i'm, I'm only going to read go over this dead quickly so obviously you can read it on the screen but basically what they're going to to players and node owners they are st they are basically temporarily stopping the distributions of town coin they're saying it's to work on the economy the the in-game economy but also to add some more stuff that they're saying it's going to be fun they'll add more fun stuff and and make the game better uh, they're saying that they they really want to push town star forward they love the game it is basically sort of you know obviously it's their first game and they're basically saying that the reason why they're doing this is to basically put all this stuff into action. And then somewhere down the line, they are going to, well, we make the assumption that they are going to bring Town Coin back. The, the one thing that I think is, I guess, a bit weird um, with this is that they say here, they say here, we will continue to run both the daily challenges and the competitions, yeah? Competitions is great, but the daily challenges, right? They're saying basically if you if you if you do the daily challenges, right? You can so you can go in and do the daily challenges, but then the da the daily town points claimed will not result in any town distribution and will be erased at the end of the day. So, you know, I thought, well, perhaps what they would do is that we would go in, we would do our daily challenges, and we would basically accumulate those points. And then once they reintroduced town back into, uh, like, distributions into the game, we would then just get paid on all the points that we earned. That is not what they're saying. They're basically saying you can go in, you can do the daily challenges, but you're not getting. You, but all the points are going to be reset. All the points are going to be reset, and then you're not going to earn anything. So, for me, what is the point in going in and play? Why? I mean, obviously, I will use still use the P2E servers. I will still use the P2E servers uh, just to practice for the competitions, but. 
the thing is, you know, if all the only reason, you know, if all if you're not playing in the weekly competitions and you're only doing uh, playing Town Star to uh, do the daily challenges and claim Town Coin, you might as well just not bother. In my opinion, because you're not going to, all you're going to be doing is using your your computer and electricity, and you're not going to be getting anything back. I mean, obviously, right now you're not really getting a whole lot back anyway because of the price of town. But you know, as we all know, crypto is one of these things that it's it's a long game. It is a long game, and so I don't mind that in the sense of I don't mind that the 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 coin is low because you know I believe in the gala platform and when it becomes what we all hope it will become these coins especially gala in my mind are still not convinced that town is going to equate to much but it will probably become bigger than it is now but um gala is definitely in that i believe is definitely going to increase once the platform really starts putting out some good games and start you know we really start seeing the community growing people constantly using these games that is going to make gala token big i think but to basically say well you we're going to do you can go in and do the daily challenges but you're not going to get anything for it i personally think that if you're not doing the competitions and therefore, you don't re- you don't really have any other reason to go into the P2E. I would just go and find something else to do. I'm not saying abandon the game completely. I would just say keep an eye on Discord. Obviously, they're saying they're going to be doing updates all the time, letting you know the progress of these uh, you know these upcoming things uh, and how they're getting on and how far along they are with complete uh, until completion. And I will just keep checking back on the updates. And, you know, once they say, yes, it's all completed, we're bringing town back or whatever, then go back in and start playing the game again and start doing the daily challenges. But if if you're not, if you're if you're only doing it to collect town, well, you're not going to be collecting town. So I don't really see the point in playing. Uh, But like I say, I will continue to use the P2E servers as a means of practicing different builds for the competitions. So. Obviously, with these competitions, they're going to be probably paying out. Obviously, a lot. They're probably you're probably going to get start getting a lot more NFT competitions, and hopefully, I I'm hoping they will start bringing more regular gala competitions, so you can win gala on a more regular basis, and probably do less NFT competitions and do a few more gala competitions as rewards. Okay, so we really, uh just go leave that update there obviously i kept it on the screen for quite a long while i hope you read all of it and you understand what it's all about so just as a quick a few tips to finish off the games um so obviously a lot of people when we're on um discord you know they asked me to look at their builds they asked me if there's anything that they can do to um improve their build one of the things i always say to people when i look at their builds is you've got too many roads uh, the thing is, and the thing is, is people think that roads speed things up, and I guess they do to a certain point. But it also removes area that you can put other things. You see, if you look with my windmills, my uh, my tractors, and my loggers, basically I have bits of road because windmills tractors and loggers need to be near a road uh, to basically allow you to build them but i don't have lines and lines of roads i basically i mean i and people will point this out i did i have made a mistake here basically all these loggers here should be mills because that would bring the mills a lot closer to the silos and then all those loggers that you can see should essentially be over this side by the water but the amount of mills is right for my build and the amount of loggers is right for my build i've just sort of put them sort of not quite in the right place in the competition i actually did start moving some of my loggers over by the water and some of my mills to closer to the silos and it did certainly improve 
the amount of sugar I was making. It did really help with that. But it, because obviously swapping things over slows you build down. I actually only moved about five loggers and put about five mils in their place. Because it was it, just by doing that was already slowing my uh, the amount of points I was earning down. So I didn't go, I didn't complete it com uh, totally. But next time we do a build like this, I I will remember that essentially this area needs to be windmills, and then uh, those loggers need to be over by the water. But what I'm trying to get out is by doing it this way. It means that you can get more into your tile and therefore that will up your production. Uh, obviously, the, the more tractors you can have, uh, as long as none of them are falling asleep, that means that's going to improve the, the speed of collection of your raw materials. And obviously, the amount of loggers you have, again, as long as uh, the, they're not falling asleep, the faster your logs are going to be collected put into your um, lumber yards for your uh, tractors to collect, to then take to your strawberry fields and so on and so on. And basically, so that's one of the biggest tips I can give you is basically minimize the amount of roads that you use. And when it comes to, and, and again, I mean, you can see here, I've got all my loggers, all my, pretty much all my loggers and all my tractors all over the same side all in one area so they're basically as far away from my crops as possible obviously with this build um strawberries didn't suffer from shade so what i did was i put strawberries all right next to my roads and then i put my other crops like sugar behind those so i used the strawberry fields as like a buffer to because they don't they're not affected by shade they're only affected by pollution and salt which obviously I'm I'm by a river, not not an ocean, so it, that wasn't going to affect them. I made sure that my uh, factory, my um, um, fuel depot, was nowhere near them. So again, they're not. It's not affected. And like I say, by doing it that way, you can um, by arranging your build this way, you're keeping everything all sort of in. It together, all your loggers, all your mills, all that all over one side. You've got your depot and that all over the other side. And then you're using the strawberry fields as a buffer against any kind of shade for your other crop. So like I say, it, you know, so your, your sugar's not going to get affected by shade because it's far enough away from your buildings to not be affected. So that's sort of about when it comes to builds like this, even things like your candy cane builds and stuff like that. Set your mills up, your loggers up, and that something like this. Only use bits of road uh, because that means that's going to allow you to get more on your tiles, which again is going to improve your production. Just like I said, don't do the mistake I've made and try and, and basically put your mills as close to your silos as possible, and then put your loggers over, a, you know, to you know next to the water or somewhere like that. But just get their mills as close to them silos as possible for speed. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to leave that there. I hope you found it informative, helpful, and useful. And if you can smash that like button, it really supports my channel, which then helps me bring more content to you. So take care. Have a great rest of your week, and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.